after 0.6. That will be significant. We're a few seconds in front, of course, of March PPI, and we're also going to be watching claims quite closely. And the numbers are our final PPI headline month over month up two tenths of a percent. It definitely eased back from that up 0.6. Two tenths, well, you have to go all the way back to. About to equal it in September of last year to find a lower number would be June of last year when it was zero. Up two tenths when you strip out food and energy, that follows point three. Strip out food, energy, and trade, up two tenths. Our last look was up four tenths. Up two tenths in this category is actually the lightest level going back to November of last year. And if we look at year over year headline, year over year headline, we're expecting 2.3. It comes Comes in at 2.1. I'm sorry, year over year 2.2. We're expecting comes in at 2.1. That follows 1.6. 2.1 there is the hottest level going back to April. So there's the first number that is definitely a bit hotter than our last look. Even though it's a little less than expectations, many are going to compare it to the actual number. Strip out food and energy, uh, so we go from headline to core. 2.4, higher than anticipated, much higher than a 2.0 in the rearview mirror. 2.4 is the highest since August of last year. And finally, uh, 2.8 is our X food energy and trade that follows 2.8, which actually was revised to 2.7. These 2.8 numbers are basically running where we were in September last year when it was a little hotter at 2.9. Initial continuing claims quickly 211 on initial claims, less than expected, and 1,817,000 uh, when it comes to continuing claims. Very close to expectations, and both those metrics stay relatively depressed. We see that interest rates move down a little bit, 455 from 457, twos from just a whisker under 5% to 494, 494 and a half. So the PPI numbers, even though they were a bit hotter, they definitely seem to, on the month over month, assuage some wholesale inflation fears. Becky, back to you. Yeah, that's the case in the equities outlook, too. If you're looking at the stock market futures, actually, maybe we bring that board right back. We went from uh, looking at the futures indicated off by about 200 points to right now the Dow futures down by just 47 points. NASDAQ futures actually turned positive. They're up by about 13. Rick, thank you. Uh, let's jump right over to Steve Leisman. He's got some more details on that data, too. Yeah, Steve, what are you seeing? Back real quick, the uh, uh, reason why this number is important is because how it feeds into the PCE number. I think it could cause maybe a tenth uh, a decline. And so the Fed's inflation indicator, the one it follows most, which we'll get, I believe, on the 26th of this month, will not be as bad as the CPI. I don't think today's number gets rid of or otherwise offsets totally the CPI number, but it is an offset to some extent. It does suggest there is not tremendous um, inflation up the pipeline uh, coming down toward the consumer uh, when you take out some of the commodity price increases, which, of course, are an issue when it comes to the headline. There was a kind of weird increase in passenger costs or wholesale passenger costs might reflect some increase in international travel uh, 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 airline airline costs. Other than that, things seem pretty well uh, under control. And what we're going to look for here is what happens to the PCE later this month. It should still it could potentially still show some improvement and that's what I'm watching for. Do the do Fed officials still believe there'll be improvement in inflation this year, Becky? Yeah, sure. Not the confirmation that some people are anticipating with this number today. So it does keep things up in the air. Steve, thank you very much.